Hello everybody, this is Jordan from Serendipity OA, and in today's video I am going to discuss our Order Tracker 2.0, which we have just released. And so at its core, Order Tracker 2.0 uh, is very similar to the version 1.0 uh, that we had released a few months back. And so if you haven't watched that video yet, I would recommend that you go back and you watch that video first, which will be linked down in the description. Uh, the purpose of this video is not to discuss the core functionality. This video is just to discuss the additions and changes that we have made to version 2.0. So firstly, you can see uh, Order Tracker 2.0 has had a quite a substantial facelift. So it looks a lot nicer. Uh, the colors are more streamlined and uh, very similar throughout the entire Order Tracker. And we have released a bunch of additional functionality in this Order Tracker as well. So the first things that we'll talk about are our regular Order Tracker sheets. So the OA, RA, and Wholesale sheets. So we can see that this does look very similar to 1.0. Um, it still has the same script in it, so when you export uh, new data to your sheet, it'll come to the pending section first, and then once every minute or whatever trigger you set, it will uh, send that data to the corresponding heading. So again, if you purchase something, say, from Amazon, uh, once every single minute, it'll run the script and it'll move it from up here down underneath the proper heading. And if it doesn't have a heading for you, it will make a new one and put it down at the bottom of the sheet automatically for you, which you can then move and organize however you see fit. Uh, so the only change that we've made in the order tracker sheets is we have added a new column over here called tax rate. And so this is if you want to keep tabs on the taxes you have paid on your inventory purchases. This is not a replacement for traditional bookkeeping or accounting and it should not be used as such but if you do want to keep tabs on the taxes that you have paid you can certainly use this functionality and so the way that it works is that we have a drop down menu right here and we have three options we have gst slash pst or this would uh, rather be known as hst in provinces like ontario that have hst uh, we have a gst only section and then we also have a tax exempt section so whatever option you choose, it'll pull the data from the lines that you have entered with your tax rate over here. And it'll pull that data into the taxes tab all the way down at the end here. And we can see that we can filter by year up here. And so right now we're on 2023. And with the data that we have entered into our sheet, uh, we had had uh, some purchases from Amazon. It tells us what our total purchases are and then how much we have for total GST and PST or HST purchases and then our total GST and uh, PST or HST paid grand total. And then it also separ separates it out for GST only or PST only. And then alternatively, if we change this to say it's a GST only purchase, it'll move that data down and it'll tell us that it's a GST only purchase and it'll tell us the GST paid on GST only purchases as well. And so with this sheet, you can update your tax rates over here accordingly. So whatever uh, tax rate you set over here, it'll adjust the calculations that it does over here for you. So just for example, um, GST is standard across Canada, but if for some reason you had a GST rate of 10%, we can see that it updated the calculation over here automatically for us. And again, we have a filter up here, so you can filter by year if you so choose. So if you did, uh, it breaks down uh, by year. So if you want to look at just your 2022 purchases, you can put that there and it'll update all the data in here accordingly. In our example sheet here, we only have a couple lines of data and it's all from 2023. So that will show us the 2023 data over here. So that is the only changes that we have made in the regular arbitrage sheets. And now we'll continue on to the rest of the sheet here. So if we head into the dashboard, you can see that we've had, we have added a bunch of additional data into the dashboard. So these sections over here are uh, fairly similar. Uh, we now have some additional sh uh, sections that tell you how many units you currently have ready to ship, uh, the total cost of those units that you have ready to ship uh, based on each individual sheet. So your OA, RA, and wholesale sheets, uh, the total potential profit based on your profit numbers that are in these sheets as well, uh, the total potential revenue, and then we have a section over here uh, called the shipped units section. So whenever a, um, an item is checked off as shipped, that will update that section right there. 
and sorry, I apologize with this one. I got ahead of myself. The ready to ship section will just pull data based on the units that you have checked off as ready to ship. So in this example, we have one row of data. So we have 24 units at 523 each. So that tells us that we currently have 24 units ready to ship and the corresponding stats with those ones as well. And if we come down here and we check off the additional 36 units after we've received them, we'll go February 14th, say we received 36 more units, and we check off those guys as ready to ship, that will add those uh, that additional stats in here as well. And so again, with the dashboard, we have the secondary uh, shipped units section. So if we have shipped these out, we mark off that they're no longer ready to ship, but they are rather shipped. That will update this section over here. Um, so you can see that it pulled the exact same data that was over here, and it now has it over in this section here. And this is filtered by month. So we can change this by month or by year, however we see fit. And then the last section that we have on the right-hand side here is the overall totals. And so this will pull through all your totals, um, regardless uh, what you have checked off. And it'll be based on whatever year you have entered in up here. Okay, so then the next section is the quick link section. So this is exactly the same as it was before. No changes have been done here. The spend tracker here, we have made some uh, decent changes to as well. So you can see we have added just some additional data points in here for you to reference. So we have things like your total potential profit that you have ordered for the month, your total potential revenue, how many units in total you have ordered, how many units total you have shipped, again, based on your shipped checkbox in the order sheets, your total average ROI for the month, and your total average sales rank for the month as well. The inventory on hand sheet is exactly the same. So is the supplies order tracker. The next sheet that we have added in here is a new scan power import list sheet. So this is a sheet that has some great functionality if you use scan power or boxed. And what this does is it allows you to more easily uh, and more quickly import your new SKUs or your shipments into scan power. And so the way that this works is when you have your orders over here, anything that you have checked off as ready to ship will automatically be imported into the scan power import list. So we can see, uh, sometimes it does pull through the heading here, sometimes it does not. So if it does pull through a heading, that's just something that you have to ignore. Um, but you can see here that it has pulled through everything that we have checked off as ready to ship. And what we can do is we can follow the instructions uh, directly from scan power in the video up here which shows you how to install the extension for this section here. And then once we have everything ready to ship, we're ready to build our shipping plan. What we can do is we can just highlight anything that we are ready to upload into scan power, head over, head over to the extensions uh, section here, click scan power and click import buy list information. And then this will import everything that you have highlighted directly into scan powers import list or buy list rather. And then from there, you can uh, export that directly to a brand new batch and or shipment. And a couple additional uh, nice features that are in here as well is the import M SKU section. Uh, this section uh, makes a SKU for you automatically based on the supplier dash your purchase price dash a random placeholder number and it only makes a SKU for you if you have um, it indicated that the item is a new SKU. So again if we come back over here we can see that we have options again to uh, check off if an item is a replant or a new SKU and that changes our corresponding colors over here for us to give us quick visual indicators. And so in this case we have one item marked off as a new SKU so we, uh, we would need to make a new MSKU for that particular inventory item there. And so the spreadsheet does automatically for you. So again, it pulls Amazon as the source, and then it pulls 523 as the buy cost. And then it puts a placeholder number at the, at the rear, just to ensure that you never have the same MSKU twice. If your item is checked off as a replan, like this one is here, it will not make an MSKU for you automatically. Um, so you can leave that section blank if it is a replan, um, or if you prefer to make your own MSKUs, you can do that as well. Um, and when you import this into scan power, it should pull through your existing inventory for you automatically. So you will not have to make a new MSKU there. Um, and then 
our stats section here. This one is exactly the same as it was previously. We have changed nothing here. And then obviously the last sheet that we have here is our taxes section, which we have discussed a little bit earlier in the video. And that more or less covers the changes that we have made in uh, our order tracker 2.0. So these are quite some substantial changes that we've made. Um, these give you a ton of additional data points for your business to help you grow your business and be more consistent and more steady with your growth. Um, so yeah, we see that I, I feel like this is a pretty good change um, and a good direction where we are taking the order tracker. I imagine that in uh, order tracker 3.0, we will be introducing some additional graphs and some additional information into there. Uh, but for now, I believe that this is a, a quite a good change. And I do believe that uh, this change can be pretty handy for a lot of Amazon sellers.